Happy Friday interwebs and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm a big security nerd and your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting April 6, 2015. Without further ado, let's jump right into our daily security bites. And today I'm going to recommend you watch a HBO comedy to learn about information security. I know this sounds pretty crazy and unconventional, but I mean it sincerely, as last Sunday's episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver covered government surveillance. In it, Oliver started by pointing out that June 1st, 2015 is when the U.S. government is going to decide whether or not to reinstitute the Patriot Act, which has major ramifications on how much the government can do surveillance. He also talks about how the Snowden leaks has affected the public's understanding of government surveillance. Or more surprisingly, he points out how little the U.S. general populace understands who Snowden is or what he leaked. Most people apparently don't know Edward Snowden name, or if they do know the name, they think he actually runs WikiLeaks. To figure this all out, Oliver actually travels to Moscow to interview Edward Snowden in person, and this alone is why I recommend that episode. Now don't think Oliver's just there to throw comedic softballs. He actually asks some pretty insightful, hard-hitting questions. And in the end, they come to the core of the issue, which is the content of the Snowden leaks is pretty complex and technical. It's hard for normal people to understand. The questions of surveillance over privacy are not simple. They don't have any easy answers. However, Oliver does recommend a new humorous context Snowden can use to describe some of these technical issues. I won't give away the joke, but it's pretty funny. Anyways, if you're interested in information security, I think this is actually a pretty relevant and interesting episode to watch, despite the fact it's just a comedy show. And even if you don't have HBO, you can watch this on YouTube for free in full. If you're actually watching me on on YouTube right now, just click the link up there and you can watch it. Now that said, this is a HBO show, so do expect it to have some adult content and language. If that offends you, you might want to skip it. Now I know it seems weird that I'm recommending a comedy show to learn about information security, but actually sometimes it takes good satire to really open our eyes to the real issues we're looking at. So even though this is a comedy show, there's a lot of insightful stuff in it. On Tuesday, the FBI released a public service announcement warning U.S. citizens to beware of fake or fraudulent government sites. Apparently criminals have been seeding search results so that if you're searching for sites for government services such as changing your social security number or finding your employer's identification number, you might encounter some malicious results. And if you click on these sites, they pretend to be government sites offering services. And really they're there to get your personally identifiable information. Things like your name, address, email address, and social security number and more. To add insult to injury, if you actually apply for services, they ask you to pay a fee. So not only do they steal your information, but they steal your money too. So anyways, if you're a U.S. citizen, you should look out for these sites. The FBI warns you to be careful uh, where you go to in search results. They also warn you to do a little bit of research about government sites or any sites you visit. And this is a good general tip. For instance, if you're trying to do online purchasing from an online store you haven't heard of before, it's probably a good idea to do some research on that online store first. Now, while this is a U.S.-centric story, it does have another security tip I'd like to point out, and that's just to be knowledgeable about something called Black Hat SEO. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, and these are essentially tricks marketers use to try to get results for their pages to show up earlier in search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo. However, bad guys like using search engine optimization tricks too. So bad guys have found all kinds of ways to make their malicious pages show up in popular search results. The tip is just be aware of black hat SEO as you search the internet. You need to be skeptical and careful of some of the search results. The good news is big search engines like Google are pretty good at filtering some of the more malicious results, but they can't protect you from everything. In today's news, allegations of Russians breaching the White House. 
Last year in October, the White House disclosed that they'd suffered an external network breach to one of their unclassified networks. In a CNN report today, we hear more details about this breach from unnamed government officials. According to these unnamed sources, the breach started with phishing emails to members of the State Department. One of the State Department users must have interacted with these spear phishing emails and got malware on their system, and then the attacker used his email address to send more phishing emails to members at the White House, who of course must have also interacted with uh, the phishing emails and got malware on their system. On top of that, we hear that this unclassified network may have had sensitive information. According to the latest reports, the attackers may have had access to President Obama's sensitive travel schedule, which wasn't available publicly. Finally, the unnamed sources claim that they've tracked this attack through proxy servers back to Russia. Now, the White House uh, response underplays this issue. They mentioned that they already disclosed this attack back in October and that this really was an unclassified network with non-sensitive information. So politics and rumors aside, what you should really care about is what we can learn now that we allegedly know how this happened. And that's to beware of targeted phishing emails. You know, bad guys now realize that if they learn a bit about your user, they can send a more customized phishing email that is more likely to lure your user into doing something they shouldn't. If you haven't updated your phishing training to let your users know that attackers are smarter about targeting them directly, you definitely should do that. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't also use defense and depth controls like WatchGuard's next generation firewalls. They can often block malware or even identify suspicious emails. But definitely update your user awareness training to account for spear phishing or targeted phishing emails. Today I'm talking Apple Patch Day. Yesterday Apple released a bunch of bulletins fixing vulnerabilities in Apple's Safari, OS X, iOS, Apple TV, and for the developers out there, Xcode. Now, these updates fix a ton of flaws. For instance, the OS X update alone fixes over 80 security vulnerabilities. And today, details about these flaws are coming out. For instance, one of the iOS ones called Phantom allows someone that can get you to change your proxy settings to basically make your phone unusable or actually not boot. Uh, there's also some interesting OS X vulnerabilities, including one that allows any user to gain full root privileges. And the author actually included a great write-up. Now I'm not going to go into a ton of the details on these vulnerabilities. No, many of them allow remote attackers to take over your computers or devices. So for that alone, if you're an Apple user, you should definitely go get those updates. However, if you are interested in the details, be sure to check out our blog post associated with this video as I'll have all kinds of references linking to these interesting details. Today's story is hackers taking out a television broadcaster. On Wednesday, TV5 Mondo, a French television broadcast network, suffered cyber attacks, which actually caused their 11 broadcast channels to go dark. So this is pretty unprecedented for a cyber attack to knock out television broadcast channels. On top of that, the allegedly ISIS-related hackers uh, went after their social media and their website too. Pretty big deal. Now we don't know how the attackers pulled this off. TV5 Mondo claims they have good security. However, the reason I'm talking about this story today is there's a new update. In a follow-up report, with one of the TV5 Mondo employees, sharp-eyed YouTubers noticed that they had many of their usernames and passwords pasted on the wall behind this television shot. And sharp-eyed YouTubers were able to actually make out some of the social media passwords. So this leads many to suspect that perhaps bad password handling practices were what allowed the attackers to break into this network. Now again, this television report happened after the attack, so we're not clear that these passwords were what the bad guys saw. But it's pretty clear that TV5 Mondo doesn't really follow the best security practices as far as passwords are concerned. So of course, one of the things you can learn here is be very careful with your passwords. Don't put them on sticky notes that you put under your keyboard or around your desk. As an aside, remember when I showed you the interview with John Oliver and Edward Snowden? Well, a follow-up extra came out where John Oliver and Snowden talk about passwords. So I'll put a link up there. You might want to go check out that video. It's pretty funny. 
That's it for this week. I hope you found it entertaining. And if you want more from us, you can find us in a number of different places. First of all, subscribe to our blog. You can get to it either at blog.watchguard.com or at watchguardsecuritycenter.com. And by the way, if you're interested in other security stories this week, be sure to check our video post there as it has a great reference section. On top of that, you can find me personally on Twitter at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. And finally, if you want the videos immediately, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyways, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank you.